kind of come up with their idea. So he is basically inspired me and then the other dude? Well, they're all kind of working at it at the same time. And then there's Archimedes way back in the past. Yeah, Archimedes. And he actually, he's using Archimedes' idea of when Archimedes wanted to be able to approximate a circle, he cut it into a whole bunch of different triangles and then figured out the area of each one of those triangles to approximate circles. And so what Raymond does is to compute this area under the curve, he, uh, he divides it into rectangles, okay? We call that in calculus partitioning. So if I ever use the word partitioning, it just means you're gonna break it into rectangles. So anytime you're asked to do a Raymond sum, it's going to be a rectangle. And it'll either be a left Raymond sum or a right Raymond sum. And we'll talk about what those are. So here what I have is this graph is g of x. And uh, it says approximate the area under the curve under the interval 2, which is right here, and 6, which is right there, with n subintervals by using a left rectangular approximation method. So <clears throat> what I did is say, okay, what if we had one, so n's gonna stand for, and that's, it's always gonna be the case here. That's gonna stand for the number of rectangles. So I'm gonna start with a really basic one, one, and it says left here. So here's my interval, and so this left corner is gonna come up, hit, the curve, and then go straight across to six. Okay, and so I'm gonna have a W that stands for the width. And Matthew, what's the width of this rectangle? Four. Four. And that could be computed as six minus two divided by one. Would you agree with that? Okay, and if we take a look, that's not a good approximation. Then we would say that's an under approximation because there's this whole area right here that's not being accounted for, correct? We only have this area. And I've already told my, my coding story, right? I did that there. So there's the one rectangle, it's way too small. So I'm gonna increase it to four. That changes my width, doesn't it? Tyler, what's my width now of every rectangle? One, how'd you get one? Six minus two divided by four. So you get one, it's six minus two divided by four. And so that means again, I would start here at the left and I would have this rectangle. It has a width of one right here. And then I would create a new rectangle, with this being the left, going over. So that's a three. Um, yeah, yeah, because it's, I'm, making, I'm making four rectangles. Here's my first one, here's my second one, here's my third one, here's my fourth one. Oh. Each of these rectangles will start on the left-hand corner. So this is my first rectangle, this is my second, this is my going to be my third. That left corner is going to come up, hit here, and go across, come down. And then here's my last rectangle, my fourth. I'm going to start in the left-hand corner, go up, come across. So now I have this much area. And four is better than one, right? But I still have some area that's not accounted for, correct? So I could go up to eight rectangles. Callan, does that change my width? Yeah. I would, if I keep increasing my rectangles, what happens to my width? 
I started at a width of four, went to one, four, went to a width of one. Now I'm going to have eight. Am I going to have a width of one anymore? I don't know. Okay, not sure. What about you, Ella? You think so? It's going to decrease. What's it going to be? be? Uh, one, half. one half. So how'd you get a half? Six minus two divided by eight. Yeah. So I have to, if I want more rectangles, I have to make those spaces smaller to get them in. So right here is my first first one could be right here. Then I'm going to go up with a half, come over to here, go up, come over to a half. And that's better, right? So as I increase, as I increase the number of rectangles, their widths have to get smaller because I'm in a defined interval, correct? It's kind of like this. If I wanted to lose weight, I could make, clone 500 of me and shove them in this room, shove me in this room, and then make 500 more of me and show me in my room. I'd have to get thinner, correct? That's my diet reduction. Just make more of me. Mitosis. Okay, everybody with me on this so far? All right. It says, this approximation is called a Raymond sum. And it's named after a German mathematician named Bernard Raymond. Okay, so right here below is two graphs. It is 4x minus 1 half x squared, x squared. And this is a very typical AP question. It says use Raymond sums to find an approximation of the area under the curve. It says you're gonna do a left one first. And your interval is going to be from two to eight using three subintervals. That means you're gonna have three rectangles. That's what they mean when they say subintervals. So my number, my n, is three. If you remember, n is always the number of rectangles. I am going to compute, the, well, I'm not going to. Well, yeah, I will. Owen, tell me how to compute the width of each rectangle. Uh, I think we're going from two to eight, it says right here. Eight minus two divided by three. Eight minus two divided by three. And if I do that, that's six. Six divided by three, I think is two. Okay, so I'm gonna start at two. That's to the left here, isn't it? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go up right to my curve. That's as high as it's gonna go and I want a width of two, so I'm gonna go two across and down. This is rectangle number one. It has area. Colin, how do you compute the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Guess what? The width is two. So I can say this is going to be two times. What's my length? Also my height? It's six. How would I figure it out? I would take that two and plug it into. What gives me my y? Right? Isn't this isn't this point two comma six? I plug it into the function, won't I? And if I plug two into here, I'd get four times two, which is eight. Two squared, which is four. Half of four is two. I should get six. Sure enough, that's six right there, isn't it? 
Everybody okay with that? Okay. So I'm just going to write f of 2. Then. Okay, I uh, was unsure what you just did. Could you go back like about a minute? Okay, this is the width of the rectangle. Okay. This rectangle right here. Okay. Its height is right here. Right. How is that height computed? You put 2 into that function right okay, there. Okay, so a equals 2 times f of 2. Right. That's just rectangle number 1. Everybody agree? Plus. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to go width of 2. This is where I have to start my next rectangle, isn't it? And I'm going to go up all the way to the top, go to the right two, and come down. Now notice, this was an under approximation, this is an over approximation, correct? And that's going to be a width of two times what? Is it f of 2 again? F of 4. It's f of 4. Plus. So the starting point, so the one, so the, you do a rectangle, the, uh, the, the point to the most left, to the leftmost of the, along the rectangle is uh, what we plug into our function. Correct. I don't, when we're using left. Because it's left. Oh, so when we do right, it's right most of the Correct. Rectangle. Correct. Okay. Plus two times, now I'm going to go over, I'm going to, I'm here at six, I'm going to go up to here, go over, come down. That's going to be an over approximation also. So it's going to be 2f of six. 6. Now I don't do 8, do I? Right? Here I started to the left. Everything's shifted over to the left. And now what I can say now, I'm going to show you something. Notice this is really 2 times 2 times 1 plus 2 times f of 2 times 2 plus 2 times f of 2 times 3. First rectangle, second rectangle, third rectangle. I think First I rectangle, second rectangle, third rectangle. I'm just planting something for tomorrow. Okay? Now, this was 6. 2 times if I go up here, that's 8, plus 2 times if I come up here, that's 6 again. <clears throat> I could have said this, 6 plus 8 plus 6, correct? Because each width is a 2. So if I just add up these heights and multiply by 2, I also have them, don't I? Oh, so we just mul so we can just multiply the heights, combine okay. all the heights, then multiply it by as, the width. As long as the width is the same. Okay. As long as the width is the same. So wait, we're changing the width over different subintervals. You're going to see, yeah, you're going to see different subintervals at different widths. I'll show you an example down the road. Okay. okay. So this is going to be two times. I think if you add this up, that's twenty and we have an area, an approximate area of 40. We're doing okay. I think so. All right, so we're gonna come over here. Three rectangles, eight minus two is six, divided by three is two. Same width, correct? But rather than start at two, here's my width of two, I'm gonna start where? Eight. at four hmm. and go up go across and down so what determines my height here 
my value of four. That's my first rectangle. So it's two times F of four plus two times, does anybody have a guess of what it's gonna be? F of what? Six. So I'm gonna come over here to six. It's the right corner here. Again, it's the right corner that's determining the height. The right corner is gonna come up to here, go across. That's my second rectangle. Third color again. Now, I go over two more. What do I notice about eight? It's at zero. It's at zero. It has a height of what? Zero. Zero. And so there's your rectangle right there. It's a segment. But I'm going to write down plus two times f of eight. And I could take a two out, and I could say that this was a height of eight. This is a height of six. This is a height of zero. It's a way underestimate, isn't it? And I get two times 14, and I get 28. We doing okay? I think so, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, next page. Austin, what's my width? Two. Two. Besides that we've done two problems where there are two, you would say there's two because? <coughs> it's six divided by three. Yeah, eight minus two, which is six, divided by three gives me two. Okay, that's an important idea. Okay. And so now it says midpoint. And I'm, so from two to four is my width, correct? Here's my left, here's my right, left, two is on the left, four is on the right. Grace, what's the one in the middle? Three. Three. The perfect number, correct? That's my mid number, my mid point. That's what's going to derive my height. In other words, I'm going to go all the way up here and right here is where that height is. What generated that? That's going to be, I should turn the page here, two F of three. Because three's in the middle of that interval. I have a width of two, so I go from two to four, I gotta have a rectangle width of, what number's in the middle? Three. To get that height, I'm going to plug that into, remember F was, I can't remember, 4X minus 1 half X squared. Since it's not as nice, I would probably use my calculator to figure out what that number is. In fact, I hate to tell you that this, but I did. Okay. So here's my rectangle, it goes right across here. This is rectangle number one. Plus, now notice I factored out the two, right? Because I'm gonna multiply that, the final answer by two. Here's my width of my next rectangle, it's two. What's my middle number, Jonah? So it's going to be F of 5. And it's going to go up to here. It's going to go across. There's my rectangle. And Jonah, do you know what the last one is? Uh, 7. So I computed those. I found out that f of three was 15 halves. I found that f of five was 15 halves. 
I found F7 with seven halves. And so it was 37. I Every think I get it. Okay. Now, over here. This is from a long, long time ago. Way, way long time ago. Does anybody know what that thing's called? Trapezoid? That's a trapezoid. I can make it look like this, can't I? It just has two parallel sides, correct? Those two parallel sides, one is called B1, the other one's called B2, right? The trapezoid we're going to have is what's called a right trapezoid. So those two angles are 90 degrees. I think this has become the most accurate one. What? I think this may be the most accurate one so far. Ooh. Because the curve, it will fit with the curve much better. Because if you take out the rectangle part, it's a triangle, like Archimedes. So, does anybody know how to figure out the area of a trapezoid? So one half b1 plus b2 times the height. Okay, area equals one half b1 plus b2. Now, this would normally, if this would be the height, correct? Right? But when I turn it this way, that height becomes the what? The width. The width. So can I write it like this? Will you be okay? Yes. Okay. So. To find the area, I just do B1 times width plus B1, then I do times, and parentheses, B2 minus B1 t times our width again, divide that by two just splitting them into rectangles and triangles. It's more simpler for me. Okay. It's more time consuming, but it's more simple to work. So our W here is still two, because it says going from eight to two, three subintervals, correct? So here I'm at two, here I'm at four. And so this is gonna come up, and this is gonna come up. Oh, is four going to go all the way to the top? Yep. Oh, and there's my trapezoid. I get it now. It kind of looks just like this, doesn't it? Now, I only got to do three of them. So that's trapezoid number one. One half. Parentheses parentheses, my width is two. Again, I'm looking at this. They will not give you this. You're gonna have to know this. Now, what's B1, what's B2? Colin, what's B1? This would be B1 here, correct? But we're not gonna call it B1, we gotta call it something else. I didn't hear anything. Six. Okay, give it to me in terms of F. I'm not disagreeing with you that six. Where does six come from? F of two. F of two. Plus B2, what's B2? F of four. Again, that's trapezoid number one. Again, I'm gonna have a width of two. And now here's my second trapezoid. This is number two. One, 
two plus, so I'm gonna figure out its area, one half. Here's my width, two. Ariana, what's inside? Perfect, F of four plus F of six. Plus, here's my third trapezoid. That one didn't go very high, did it? But we've made a triangle into a trapezoid, a trapezoid into a triangle. A triangle is a trapezoid with one side has a height of zero. We're bending, we're bending the laws of conventional shapes. And I love that's what, it. That's what calculus does. So. Ella, F of six plus, F of eight. and I forgot my two, didn't I? So here, on this first one, do you see the one half and the twos cancel out? Yeah. So I got F of one plus F of four, right? That's what I get when I multiply by one. Everybody okay with that? Now, on this one, the half and the twos will cancel out, correct? Because they're reciprocals. And I'm left with f of four plus f of six. Would you agree with that? You should get f of one on the, the first I should have f of two. That's a typo on my pen. Thank you for catching me. Over here on the third one, the one half and the two will cancel out. Plus, I get f of 6. God, don't rate f of 7. f of 8. Notice the endpoints only come up once, and the other ones are double. Because over here, B2 on tra trapezoid number 1, B2 is on the right side, and then on trapezoid number 2, it's the left side, right? So those inner ones are doubled. So I could say this is f of 2 plus 2 times f of 4 plus two times f of six, plus f of eight. And f of two was six, f of four was eight, f of six was six, and f of eight is zero. So that's six plus 16 plus 12, and that gives me, I think, 34. And Matthew, you look are correct. There's, it's an under, right? It's an under one. Yeah, but you're that. Close, but close. It's probably the closest we'll get for now. Okay. Would everybody agree? It's pretty good. All right. So, <clears throat> let's say we have. Uh, This is, this is F. And F is increasing, correct? No, I never remember this, to be honest with you, because I draw a picture, okay? And so if I do a left Raymond sum and just put in some rectangles here, I can see that those rectangles will be an overestimate or underestimate? Ben, what would you say? Underestimate. Under. If I have a right one, right? The right corner is hitting here, the right corner is hitting here. Owen, you would say it's a? Overestimate. Now, Owen, I'm going to ask you another question. This is F. How do I know what I can do something to know that F is increasing? What can I do? Take the derivative. And that derivative would have to be? 
Or two. Huh? Zero? No. Is that one? No, I'm saying if the derivative, if f is increasing, the yeah, derivative positive. has to be <clears throat> yeah. positive. Right? Yeah. And this one would be like one. Right? Yeah. And it's positive. Yeah. Okay. You were taking the second derivative when you gave it to zero, correct? I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> okay, okay. So here we have a decreasing function. And so I'm only going to, and I got this terrible marking here. So I'm going to do left. And I'm just going to do one re rectangle because I think it's pretty obvious that, that if you have a left one, uh, Tyler, it's going to be a what? And if I have a right one, it's what, Tyler? And you could tell me the derivative then would be what? Plus zero. Plus zero. Okay, doing all right? Okay, concavity. To decide about a trapezoid, we use concavity. Grace, what derivative tells us about concavity? Second derivative. So for it to be concave up, the second derivative has got to be? So here is a trapezoid, right here. I'll just make that big for a second. Because it's hard to see. So Callan, what would you say about this area? It's an underestimate. Is it under the gra graph or above the graph? Yeah, a little bit it's above, okay? So yeah, but mostly it's gonna be an underestimate. This? The, the entire thing so far due to the fact that- This? That Are we talking about the same one? I'm saying this due to the fact that we're primarily having- What about if I had this as a trapezoid? Right here. Oh, you got a point, my bad. It's not an under, is it? It's going over the top, right? So it's an overestimate. Here the concavity would be negative. And let's see, where can I let's do here to here. Let's do you can see that you have a little bit underneath here, so it's an underestimate. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like that it's good? so close. It's yeah, it's, it's hard. It's, but you're going to see, hey, when I connect, when these get connected, it's got to be below the curve, right? It's a, it's a secant line that's below the curve. Here's a well, secant line that's above the curve. Well, you're having the width to be two nodes, so you're doing the width of the one. So you do it by two to make it more visible. Right. Mm -hmm. The width you made it to for the concave one to make it more visible. What do you want me to do? No, you made it concave. The concave down, you made the width two to make the underestimate more visible. That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. All right, so let's look at using Riemann sums with a table of values. Okay? Now, you always have to look here. Sometimes these table of values all go up by threes, correct? Sometimes they won't go up by threes. They'll go up by a three, then they'll go up by a one, and then they go up by a two, and then they go up by a five. That means the widths are changing. So you have to figure out each rectangle individually. Does that make sense? They never give you more than like three or four rectangles to figure out. I mean, they don't give you 10, because you don't have time to do probably have time to do three or four. Okay. But look at these to make sure whether they're incrementing the same amount or differently. Okay, So it says right here, 
the rate at which water is being pumped into a tank is given by a continuous and increasing function, R of T. So R of T is a rate. Its rate is gallons per minute. The independent variable is minutes. We kind of talked about this yesterday. It says a table selected values of RT for the interval zero to 12 minutes is given below. This is a very common AP question. Use the following Raymond sums with the given intervals to estimate the number of gallons, the number of gallons because the area is going to be gallons per minute times minute, which gives you gallons. Pumped in the tank during the 12 minutes. All right. It says four subintervals. Write Raymond sum. That means I'm going to have how many rectangles, Jonah? Four. Four. Can I add? I already know their widths, correct? Their widths are what? Uh, three. Three. So here I'm going from zero to 12, and I want right. So I'm gonna have three parentheses. Why can I bring the three out? Because they're all going up by three. Because 12 minus zero divided by four is three. be here? Is it going to be R of 0 or R of 3? R of 3. Why? Because it's to the right. So it's to the, it's to the right, isn't it? So I'm going to have R of 3 plus R of what? What would be the next one? 6. 6 plus R of what? 9. 9 plus R of 12. 12. Do I have four? So then I'm going to have three parentheses, 13 plus 18 plus 23 plus 27. I think I'm getting it now. Okay, so I chose, you see, if I look at these, you see it's kind of shifted to the right. When I do the next ones, it's going to be shifted to the left. It'll be these four. Does everybody see that? Right, left. Okay, when I add this up, I got 31, that was 50. I got three times 81, and it's 243 gallons. Okay. Please explain why it's just gone for, I kind of thought it would be minutes per gallon squared. I don't understand your question. For gallons per minute squared, because... No. This is what we talked about yesterday. You've oh, got so yeah, that would make sense. you got minutes here. you got gallons per minute here. Okay, now that makes sense. Thanks. This is really over one. And so then they're going to be eliminated. And the question says, how many gallons do you have? Sometimes they won't tell you that. They'll say, and with the correct units. Okay. Okay. All right, now, that 243, is, it the, is the approximation greater or less than the true value? You know it is increasing, so it's going up like this. See, I can never remember. And I use the right corner. There's a right corner rectangle. So my approximation is greater. greater. Since I have right Raymond sum and RT.
Okie doke. Okay, left. There's my three again. I already talked about it. It's going to be R6. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. R0 plus R3 plus R6 plus R9. Why do I choose zero? Because zero is to the left. So then I'm going to have the numbers 7, 13, 18, and 23. And I believe this, this is 20, this is 41, so I think it's 3 times 61, and that's 183 gallons. So Austin, is the approximation greater or less? This will be less. And again, I could draw a little thing because it's increasing. This time I'm going to put my left corner and I can say, oh, it's underneath. That's all I got to do. And you're going to say less since I have what, Austin? Left Raymond sum. Left Raymond sum. And F is what? It is decreasing. Uh, still increasing. Or increasing. Yeah. Does mean all of T is increasing? Hmm? Does mean all of T is R of T, thank you. I you guess. just do the arrow for increasing. Okay, right? now. Grace, two sub -animals. That means I'm gonna have how many rectangles? Two, width will be six, sorry. Your telepathy is uncanny, Grace, uncanny. Okay, so that means you said a width of six, correct? So here's a width of six. See that up there? From zero to six is six. Mid means I'm gonna use what number? Three. So I'm going to have six, and I just need two, so I'm going to have R of three, plus what else, Grace? R of nine. And I just need to have two, so there's my width, there's my height. There's my width, there's my height. Again, this is very typical. This may be a um, uh, multiple choice question. And so you're going to have six. I look at, I got 13. R of 9 is 23, and now I get 6 times 36, and that is 216 gallons. Trapezoid. We didn't do we didn't do the uh, justification for the midpoint. It doesn't ask me to. Oh. I don't do it if I don't get asked. Okay. I don't have all see, it's a way to be able to modify your time. If they just want to know gallons and I and they want to see the work, boom. Okay? All right. Ready, Ben? What's my width? It says four sub intervals. They change it up on you. Three. Three. How'd you get? Like 12 minus 0 divided by 4 equals 3? Okay. So I got 3. Each one of these trapezoids will have a width of 3, correct? And if you remember, we had something that looked like this. Right? This is B1. This is B2. This is now three, correct? Yeah. Right? And we have to divide it by two. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Each one of them gets divided by two. So could I factor out that half like that? Sure. All right. So all I gotta do is add B1 and B2, okay? What's B1 in terms of our problem? R of zero. R of zero. 
It is seven. You're both right. Okay. But I'm just going to put R of zero there right now. Plus R of what? Three. That's our first one, correct? This right here is number one. Here's the width. Here's dividing by two. B1, B2. Everybody with me on that? All right, number two, what's it going to be, Ben? R3 plus R6. R6, perfect. That's number two. What's number three, Ben? R6 plus R1. That's number three. And then plus, what's for number four? R9 plus R4. So in other words, I got three halves, and I got R0 plus two times R3 plus two times R6 plus two times R of nine plus R of 12. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And you said this was seven? Yeah. Plus, do you, does everybody see where I get 26? I just took 13 times two. Or my dad would say, you just doubled 13. Plus 36. I just doubled 18. Plus 46. I just doubled 23. Plus 27. Now, it really makes me mad that they give you the one like this because you really need a calculator to figure this out, right? I mean, you're gonna multiply by 1.5. And when I did that, I came up with 213 gallons. We okay? I'm so I'm going to give you one on the back that you may see, and it's going to be a real quick one. This is T, this is R, R of T. Zero, seven, one, three, four. So they give you something like that. And they say they want um, three right ones. Notice it goes up by one, then goes up by three, then goes up by two. Correct? So if I'm doing three right ones, the distance between these two numbers is my width. Would you agree? So my width is one, and it, since I'm using a right, I'm gonna choose R of one, which is eight. Everybody with me on that? Plus, then I look at the distance here. So that width of that rectangle is three. And then I'm gonna choose R of four, which is 11. And then this has a distance of two, two times 12. Times 12. And so they would need to see this work and you would come up with eight plus 33 plus 24, I think that's 65, with, yes. appro with appropriate units. 